Well, uh, it's been a while since I did a video. Been awfully busy. Um, my son owns, owns a uh, property management company, and uh, I suppose this is not a huge excuse, but uh, uh, certain times of the year he does uh, he does inspections on uh, the properties he manages and makes a list of all the things that need to be done. Uh, boy, uh, it's quite interesting, really, it, uh, that jobs can range from fixing some plumbing under a sink to uh, adjusting a door, installing weather stripping, uh, rekeying locks, fixing a dishwasher, uh, fixing uh, heating elements and timers and such on a range and oven, um, uh, changing a capacitor on a, on a air conditioning unit. Um, yeah, um, thank goodness for the internet, uh, for YouTube. Uh, I found that I find out uh, uh, from a tenant what the problem is, and if I don't know the answer, I watch a few YouTube videos. A lot of experts out there want to share their knowledge. Um, so, uh, so that's why I haven't made a video in a while, is I've just been uh, too swamped with work uh, to do it and, uh, and lazy at the same time. So, and it's been football season. Uh, so Sundays are kind of used up <coughs> watching football. So anyway, we're going to make a video today. And um, I had a, uh, a uh, subscriber uh, put a comment. We were discussing, uh, we had a couple of back and forth comments about uh, using the radial arm saw to make uh, box joints. So uh, I'd been thinking about it for a while uh, before he made the comment or before we got into the little comment conversation uh, about how I would go about doing such a thing. <coughs> and I happened to end up with the correct material uh, from one of the repairs that I've done on a rental. Um, so I said, what the heck, let's give it a try. So this afternoon uh, I came out to the radial arm saw uh, started scratching my head. I had a, a, a little bit of an idea of what I wanted to do. Uh, but you know how it is when it's all in your head and you got to put it into practice. Well, you come out and you start assembling parts. And uh, so that's what I did. And this is what I came up with. Uh, this is uh, three layers of, or two layers of three quarter plywood. And I put the, there was slight bow in each one, so I put the bows away from each other and then screwed and glued it together, and it came out really straight. Uh, this was a nice flat piece of three-quarter mahogany plywood that was uh, essentially straight. Uh, this is just a stop on the end so that uh, you got some place to push the, uh, uh, the boards you're going to cut and your spacers against. And... This uh, is extremely straight. If, it, if anything, it's got a slight bow where this is just, a, just a, a, a smidgen high in the middle, but not a big deal. So that sits on top of the table, which I think you can see a little bit from there. And then I, I on another, on, on one of the jobs, I was cleaning up and I found a two 13 inch wide by 30 inch long uh, sheets of very, very flat uh, MDF uh, with this melamine surface on each side, slick and nice. And it is, I mean, when you stack those up, they lay flat to each other. That's for what I'm gonna try to do here. That's absolutely essential that, that they lay flat to each other. So these fit on top of the table and bump up against this stop, okay? These don't do any cutting, they're just spacers. So what you have to do is you have to just keep after your, 
I think you can see the edge of that. Uh, my light, I bought a new light. It's, uh, it's got, a, I don't know, 120 or something LED lights. And, and it looks to me like I'm going to be washed out. But I won't really know until I do the editing on the, you know, the post editing on this thing. But you've got to get your radial, your, your, your dado blade, which I use an eight inch uh, Freud. Uh, you got to, you, you got to put the, this is close to a quarter inch, but it's just a smidge. Uh, uh, my, when I, when I stack my two uh, outside blades together, it's supposed to be a quarter inch, but it's about 10 or 12 thousandths under. Well, this is too. So you put it together, you make some trial cuts, and then you start adding. I, the thing comes with five one thousand spacers. Uh, the, 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 the dado blade does, uh, plus other spacers besides that. But it's got five one thousands in there, so you can really fine tune it. Um, I got it to work on my saw and my material. Uh, it works really well with three one thousand spacers. Uh, things are going to be different. Uh, with your dado blade and your material, but so so that's that, and uh, then I made I did these cuts right here, uh, and they fit absolutely perfectly. Uh, I've got the depth just a pinch longer than what you'd need, uh, but I'd rather have them too long than too short. But they, they, they fit together very nice. There's, uh, there's no gaps. Uh, it's it's very good fit. And so, um, here, here we're going to do one and see how she comes out. Um, stack those on there. I've already got a line here, uh, a mark on, on the table that sets this thing to where this cuts that depth. Um, so... Now all I have to do is screw it down if I can find the, the screw gun and the screw right here. And that's another reason I left this lip sitting down here so I wouldn't have to use really long screws to uh, anchor it down to the table. There again, some guys may uh, not like putting screw holes in the table, but it's a table. Uh, uh, an occasional screw hole is not going to hurt the base of this thing. And the top is just screwed down a piece of 3 8 uh, probably AD plywood. It's an inexpensive piece of plywood. So I'm not worried about it. Um, as soon as it gets too butchered up, uh, I go at it with the, uh, if it gets cut up, I go at it with the uh, epoxy anyway and uh, patch it and then sand it down because I really don't care what it looks like. <coughs> I'm not trying to win a beauty contest, which reminds me of a, of a time years ago. Maybe I'll tell you a story. Years ago, my mom and dad and I must have been, oh, somewhere around 30, you know, that age where you know everything, at least you think you do. And uh, <coughs> I'm sitting there with my mom and dad who are probably in their 50s. Yeah, they're in their 50s, middle 50s or so. And uh, we're arguing over politics and economics and religion and whatever else, uh, which is something we always did. You know, it's, uh, we always thought it was nonsense that uh, uh, you don't talk about politics, economics, and, and religion in polite company. Uh, those are the three most important things in our lives, uh, far more important than football. Not that we don't talk about football and baseball and basketball and fishing and hunting and mechanics and carpentry and all that other stuff, too. <laughs> but occasionally we got to talking about politics. And I guess the argument got pretty heated, and um, as they sometimes did. And uh, my mother says to me, uh, son, uh, you're probably never going to win a popularity contest. And uh, my dad chimes in immediately and says, and I don't think you're ever going to win a beauty contest either. Well, I ain't never won either. So uh, I guess uh, they knew what they were talking about. So now you got it screwed down. I got a stopper on the end. I put a fresh one on because uh, uh, in my trial and error, I, I kind of muffed it up. So you start out, if I can get that camera 
in there where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I think so. I think you can see that if I don't get my big ass in the way. So, you start off with one board sitting down and you got one board missing. Slip this one in and put this on top. All right? Um, this, uh, this works. Um, uh, even if this one doesn't work, because uh, I'm still practicing, this is my second shot, sh well, maybe my third or fourth try at it, okay? So, and they didn't all come out just right. <clears throat> they all came out good enough to where I knew that it was me and not the setup that was causing it to be wrong. And uh, so, uh, I think we'll just, we'll just cut one now. Um. Now you remove two. <clears throat> Slide one out, put the backboard in again in the same place. If you don't remove two, which I didn't do the first time I did this, uh, you don't end up with a notch. All right, remove two. Make sure those are pushed up tight against the uh, spacer. I hope I'm not in the way. Whoop. I can see that I can see that I didn't have this pushed in all the way and I got one shallow notch. I'll have to go back and fix that. So now you remove two. And finish cutting. Now you can see they all look good except they all look good except for that one notch right there. It's too shallow. So now I'm gonna have to uh, stack these back up and recut that one. I think it'll be right there. Evidently, I didn't have it pushed in all the way. There you go. That's really about the only thing that can go wrong. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure I had it pushed in all the way on a few of these. Let me check them. Yep, that was a little shallow too. All right, so now you just fit them together and uh, doggone if they don't fit pretty darn good. The, uh, these ends stick by just a little bit. You can feel them with your finger. Uh, personally, I'd probably have them stick by just a little bit more so I could sand them off, but uh, the tops and bottoms are flush. Uh, gosh, uh, it's a winner. Uh, it, uh, the cotton picking thing, uh, all right, you don't need no close up on me. Uh, the, uh, the thing works. Uh, there's a, a, a good one, and uh, there's a good one, and uh, that's it. Uh, with this thing, you can do. Uh, the maximum you can do uh, would be uh, with this setup, uh, probably, where's my tape measure? Uh, I left it in the house. Uh, here's one. The maximum board you could do is four inches. Now, the reason I knew, for one reason I knew that, that, this, uh, that this cut was going to be a little bit shy of a quarter inch was because when I measured this stack, it's four, four inches less about, oh gosh, a 32nd. Well, a 32nd divided by what? One, two, three, four, five, 
uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 boards. Uh, that only puts you a couple of thou uh, less than a quarter inch, right? So uh, I, I guess uh, you could make this, you're, you're not going to be able to go much taller because of the limitations of the saw. Uh, you might be able to go, <coughs> I haven't checked it out because this is all the boards I had. Uh, you might be able to go six inches. <coughs> That's a pretty good sized box. Most of, the, most of these uh, kinds of joints, uh, at least for me, uh, I only use them for decorative uh, on, on uh, jewelry boxes and such like that. And, I, and, I, and I've always used the, uh, uh, a jig on the table saw. And uh, let me tell you, uh, this is easier than the jig on the table saw and more accurate too. So uh, for years, everybody said, I can't get rid of my table saw because I use it, I said it too, because I use it for making my box joints. Well, that's not so much, is it? Uh, <coughs> as you can see, you can make nice box joints uh, on the radial arm saw with a pretty simple jig. Now, if you want to make a 12 inch deep box uh, with, uh, you know, a half inch box, inch box joint, a half inch, you know, notches or, or three quarter inch notches, uh, well, uh, you're, you're probably going to use a, uh, uh, a table saw jig for that. I've got one that cuts three eighths. Um, but I happen to like the quarter inch notch. Uh, <coughs> and I can't imagine making a jewelry box <coughs> that's more than maybe six inches de deep. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I can jack this up uh, another few inches. I'm finished cutting, so I'm just going to go ahead and see what my maximum height would be. Let me move around the side. Uh, one of the advantages of being short is that uh, it's hard to reach. Nope, about the highest you're going to do. You could get rid of one layer of plywood here. Uh, so, yep, if you got rid of, of one layer of plywood, you're at uh, five and a quarter. So if you got rid of one layer of plywood, you could do close to six inches, if not six inches. If you got rid of one layer of three quarter plywood, that's on this saw. This is the uh, 790. Um, so, and it's a 12 inch saw. So I don't know how much you'd get, how much height you're gonna get uh, on uh, the smaller <coughs> uh, deltas and the smaller Dewalts. But um, I guess uh, it's important that you have a, uh, a good dado set. I, I can't imagine trying to make those adjustments with um, one of those wobblies, I've got one, and uh, uh, I've adjusted them many times in the old days uh, and spent, well, I don't know, gosh, <laughs> you adjust and you get close, but you're too wide. So you try to adjust thinner and now you're too narrow. You try to, it's, it's hard to hit that, that, that mark that you want. Uh, Adjusting by one thousandths of an inch at a time is a better deal. Uh, I did notice with my with my uh, uh, Freud dado set, it's an eight inch dado set, but the six inch one is identical, just smaller. <coughs> that it comes with a <coughs> a bunch of sixteenth inch, um, uh, maybe they're sixteenth or an eighth, sixteenth of an inch, I think, uh, spacers. I think there's four of those. Then there's a uh, 20 thousandths and there's a 15 thousandths. They need to put a 10 and a 5 in there. And if you put a 10 and a 5 and a, and a 1.5 and a 20, plus all the ones, the 5 one thousandths that they put in there, hey, you could hit just about any size you want because uh, since the, the dumbass Americans started letting them ship this metric crap into the country, uh, it's no telling how thick something's going to be. You know, gosh, when I started in construction, a piece of half-inch plywood was 
I'm, I swear, it was probably within a thousandth of an inch of being a half inch. Same with a quarter, same with three quarter. Now they sell you this stuff and they call it uh, half inch is what? Uh, 15, 30 seconds or something like bullshit like that they got written on it. Three quarters, 23, 30 seconds or something. No, it used to say three quarter on it and damn stuff measured three quarters of an inch. But that's just my gripe. Um, so anyway, they need a good dado. Uh, as you can see, uh, the whole thing is done with the soft flipped uh, with the blade horizontal. Um, it's easy. Uh, it's, it's way easier than I thought it would be. And um, uh, if, if I didn't make this video clear, uh, I'll certainly be happy uh, if, 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 if somebody makes it in the comments. I'll certainly do one again, maybe with no, nothing with me in it, but maybe with the camera set up and a little closer to the cutting. Uh, but uh, there you go. There's uh, uh, box joints with a radial arm saw. What more could you ask for? These things do make me smile because they are fantastic machines and I'm sure you guys love them as much as I do. Oh, oh by the way, uh, another reason for me to keep my table saw. As soon as I got this all set up with the dado blade in it and all things pretty close to adjusted the way I wanted it, I needed to cut a few more boards. Well, you know, if I hadn't had that radial arms or that table saw sitting there, the damn thing only cost me $40. You know, it came with a joiner and the whole deal. I mean, if I didn't have that thing still sitting there, I'd have to take the dado blade off, put the new blade on, flip the thing around, adjust it. It's just handy to have both. You don't need one of those giant 10-inch, uh, uh, three-horsepower saws. If you, hell, if I had a three-car garage for a shop, I'd have one if I could afford it. But my little one-horsepower uh, Delta Rockwell just saves me a lot of time because I've got two saws I can use simultaneously. If, I, if, if I'm all set up and I discover, ah, dang it, I need to cut that just a little bit shorter, or I need to rip this or whatever, I've got the little Delta uh, Rockwell sitting there and I can, I can do the job. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, 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 I hope you uh, learned something and I'll try to make them a little bit more often. Thanks for watching.